And we are back on a Monday, Monday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz, eighth day of April, 2024. Spring break's over, kids. Sorry, it's back to school. Well, you know, at least uh, when Anchee and East might have a late start, there is that. Uh, uh, it is, of course, uh, Eclipse Day. You probably have heard about this. We're not going to see a, a big chunk of it. There'll be a partial eclipse here, about 20 percent of the uh, sun will be covered by the moon. I'll give you the little timeline of what we can expect here. Weather-wise, we should be able to see it. We'll have some clouds out there, but looks like uh, quite a bit of sunshine. Very windy tomorrow. There's a Pacific front that's coming through. Uh, temperatures are going to be about normal today, about normal tomorrow. Bit of a warm up as we get to the back part of the week. As far as the weekend is concerned, they don't know. It's just there's too much uncertainty out there. We have a general idea of what the forecast is going to be like at least through Thursday, and we'll take what we can get. We'll have the weather forecast. We'll have the news. We'll have sports. The Wenatchee Wild season is over. They forced a sixth game in overtime on Friday night. Crazy game. They were ahead 4-2 to two at the very end of the game. Kelowna pulled their goalie and scored two quick goals to force overtime, but we pulled it out, unfortunately, yesterday afternoon up. In Kelowna, the Rockets got the best of the Wild. The Wild season has come to an end. Austin Drade will be joining me live in studio to wrap up the Wild season. That'll be in the back half of the program. And the usual shenanigans apply. Let's do it. Let's begin with our tour around North Central Washington with our cameras around the valley, courtesy of Local Tell's Sky Fi Division. And that, of course, is the Wenatchee Heights camera. I think they, there's some sort of filter on that. I don't know what's going on, but it's actually not that dark. It just looks that way. The sun's been up for well over half an hour. 624 this morning. Sunset tonight, 741. That's 13 hours and 17 minutes of daylight. We had 57 on Saturday. We had 58 yesterday. Normal high 59. So it was a little below normal as far as our temperatures were concerned over the weekend. Not quite as sunny and mild as we were anticipating. Camera 2, I believe, is the number one canyon camera. Here we go. There is the sun. Here's your timeline for today for the partial eclipse. It's going to last a while. It'll start at 1038 this morning right here in the Wenatchee Valley. That's when you'll start seeing the moon uh, get between the earth and the sun. It'll be at its peak here at 1131. Uh, again, only about 20% of the uh, of the moon is going to be covering up the sun. So not like it's going to be across a huge swath of the country, but we'll take what we can get, and it will be all over at 1225 this afternoon. So it starts at 1038, it'll be at its apex, the maximum amount of Earth, uh, the ma maximum amount of, of the moon covering up the sun at 1131, it'll be all over by 1225. Camera number three, up to Lake Wenatchee we go. Not looking too bad up there, snow continues to melt. So it looks like there still might be a little bit of snow down at Kaler Glen on the North Shores. They don't get a lot of sunshine there. Of course, uh, even on the sunny days, that shadows and the trees kind of keep the snow hanging on to the earth a little longer than normal. Omi Garden's looking good. At least the camera is. There you go. Zoomed in just a little bit, the Omi Garden camera. And it looks like the weather is going to at least cooperate today, so there'll probably be some controlled burns in some locations around the Wenatchee Valley because it's not going to be too windy today, but it will be tonight, and especially on Tuesday. We have this slide to show for you from the National Weather Service. For, uh, for the wind, it's going to be rather windy. It will pick up in intensity tonight. We'll have sustained winds at about 15 miles an hour, but we can see gusts above 20 tonight. Very windy on Tuesday most of the day. It'll be fairly calm in the morning. As the day progress progresses, it'll get a little windier and wind gusts near 30. For the Wenatchee Valley, this is gusts, not sustained winds. Sustained winds would be more like 10 to 25 miles an hour, depending on where you live. But some places will see gusts even up to 45 miles an hour as a pretty good system rolls into our area. But it's also going to bring us some sunshine. From the National Weather Service, here you go. 58, just one degree below normal. Mixture of clouds and sun, uh, kind of hit and miss back and forth. Very little rain today, kind of almost exactly like what you had yesterday. Really, we're just going to repeat Sunday all over again, just about the same high that we hit yesterday as well. Mostly cloudy in the early evening hours tonight. Then the system comes through. It'll blow the clouds out of here. It'll be a little windy. It's also bringing in some mild air with a low of about 43. Tuesday, lots of sunshine. The story tomorrow, story tomorrow is going to be the wind, quite breezy at times. 
as we already showed you, will top off at about 60. Clear on Tuesday night, 36 for the overnight low. That's below normal. Not too bad Wednesday and Thursday. Lots of sunshine Wednesday, lots of clouds Thursday, but we warm up to the mid 60s anyway. And again, there just there's just a lot of uncertainty about what to expect for Friday into the weekend. So there's a chance of almost everything. Could get wind, could get rain, could get sun. They don't know yet. Maybe we'll have a better idea by this time tomorrow. So that's your forecast from the National Weather Service. We're gonna take a break and come back with the news. You're watching a Monday edition of Wake Up in Nancy Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Blippi's back on stage with his brand new wonderful world tour. Are you ready? I'm an excavator. Sing, dance, and make new discoveries. In Blippi, the wonderful world tour with special guest Mika. My name is Mika. Yeah, it's nice to meet ya. For tickets and more, visit BlippiOnTour.com. Blippi, the wonderful world tour. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Save Full service at a low, low price. I chose Pinnacles because... Uh, they give you a lot of opportunities for really fun field trips and activities. It's a smaller school, so you feel more connected to other people. My favorite thing about Pinnacles is definitely how we got to choose our elective. I learn at my own speeds. It's a place where people can be who they want to be, and they show that by using their epic values. We choose Pinnacles because the staff is accepting. About half clouds, half sun. We are at 37 degrees. That's about what we're going to have today. We'll be doing battle. We'll see temperatures just a little below normal. Quite a bit of sunshine and a lot of wind on Tuesday. Wind goes away Tuesday night. We'll have bountiful sunshine till we get to the weekend. And then we'll find out together, I suppose. Same minutes after the hour. Grace City Church in Wenatchee got its city permit last week. So they can go forward with a new K through 12 school. They plan on calling Garden City Academy. Here in examiner Andy Kotkamp ruled on Thursday that the proposed school for up to 350 students meets the city's zoning and land use requirements. It'll be operated at King's Orchard Church of Christ. That's on Orchard Avenue. Kotkamp's permit approval comes with some conditions. The evangelical church must install crosswalks at King's Orchard to accommodate extra foot traffic. They may not have amplified outdoor music and they may not allow firearms on their property except in accord with the law. In its course catalog for parents, Grace City Church promised it would place armed security at Garden City Academy once it's opened. The Seattle man who shot and wounded another man in Wenatchee during a attempted robbery three years ago is gonna serve more than a, two years in prison. 43-year-old Donald Jeremy Brown pled guilty on Thursday to second degree assault in the August 2021 incident in which he was originally accused of shooting the 34-year-old man in the shoulder on Montana court when the victim tried to intervene in a robbery. Brown was wanted on a warrant for more than two years after the shooting until he was jailed on a firearms charge in King County last year. Schlein County Deputy Prosecutor Ryan Vallis told, tells us that he dropped two felony charges of burglary and robbery due to conflicting witness accounts and the subsequent death of one of the eyewitnesses. Judge Travis Brandt sentenced Brown to 28 months for the assault conviction. Wenatchee's Public Works Director is the latest in a series of high-profile posts 
for the city of Wenatchee, who was retiring. Rob Jammerman uh, was hired back in 2018 to run public works. That's uh, Wenatchee streets, water services, uh, and other infrastructure programs. Jammerman previously spent 30 years managing a division of the public works office in the city of Kirkland. He recently was named the new head volleyball coach for Eastmont High School. Wenatchee City Administrator Laura Gloria says Jammerman's retirement becomes effective in June. Of course, Police Chief Steve Crown is also going to retire in June, along with the city's Information Technology Director, Dale Contrell. Wenatchee is now actively recruiting candidates for all three of those positions. Both the cities of Wenatchee and East Wenatchee are going to take a closer look at their exotic animal ordinances because the Jordan World Circus is coming to town. They're going to do it after the circus leaves. After several months of public outcry against circus animals, bison and camels will still be a part of the Jordan World Circus show at the Town Toyota Center after a February decision by the Public Facilities District Board to allow, quote, domestic animals, end quote. The Wenatchee City Council will vote to amend sections of city codes to restrict the use and possession of exotic and wild animals. That won't happen until their next meeting, which is this Thursday. Mayor Jerry Lee Crawford said East Wenatchee will begin their discussions on the matter in a workshop next month. The Jordan World Circus will be at the Town Toyota Center this Thursday and Friday. Waste Sloop, the Leavenworth Cooperative that's working to reduce the amount of refuse that goes into our local landfills has a new base of operations in Kashmir. Eastside Rebuild is a reclaimed space on Railroad Avenue. It'll offer salvaged building material and a tool borrowing library, as well as classes, clinics, and special events related to Waste Loop's mission. The grand opening, Saturday, April 27th, outreach manager Amanda Close spoke with us about the project. Eastside Rebuild is our latest project, and it is a brick and mortar facility where we will be um, developing a salvage building material, retail side of things, uh, open for community donations. So if you have like leftover lumber, hardware, um, appliances from a building project, uh, those can be brought to east side and then they'll be sorted, organized, priced, and then available for community members at um, affordable prices. Uh, that will be one side of the facility. Another piece will be a tool library. So it'll be similar to you know, a general library, but instead of books, we'll be checking out tools. Um, and we're hoping to have a wide variety of tools that can be used on different home projects. And then the third component is education. And so it'll be a site for, as I mentioned, the repair um, cafes, but then also workshops focused on um, building skills um, related to home improvement construction and also reuse, uh, repurposing. Finally, on this Monday, Lance Noel has been the principal at Eastmont High School since 2013. In fact, he spent his entire career in education at Eastmont High School, beginning as a teacher back in 1996. Now, Noel is heading back to the classroom to end his career as a teacher working with students in Eastmont's alternative program. He'll do that next year. Last week, Noel told NCW Life that why he has always planned to teach again, becoming a principal was not something he originally envisioned for himself given amazing opportunities kind of asked to go into leadership and just it's been my thing um, I've always said that I wanted to end my career back in the classroom with students um, and this opportunity to work with the students in the alternative program is just it's my thing I did my master's in education with an emphasis in leadership and I did my pr principal's credentials and I did all that just for the pay raise as a teacher uh, did my internship uh, here at the high school as, a, as an administrator. I'd cover for the administrators when they were out, and um, it, was, it, I, it was fine, I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, the, the principal at the time, Mr. Marnie, um, came by and said, hey, we we're posting a new assistant principal at the high school, and I remember telling him, hey, good for you. And that's when he said, well, no, you're applying for that job. So I did that for six years and uh, loved it enjoyed it. Um, I was worried going into it because I didn't want to lose contact with students. That's, that's why I do it, um, why I got into the business. And I was still able to keep those relationships, so I was fine doing what I was doing. And then one day the superintendent at the time, Garn Christensen, came in and told me that Mr. Marnie had been appointed to the district level and uh, asked me if I'd be the new principal at Eastmont High School. 
which completely shocked me because I had never applied for a principal job or even asked about a principal job. And so there I was. So I said, sure. It's like you go from being a colleague of everyone to suddenly I'm their bosses. So as far as working with the teachers went, um, I think I had to de develop a relationship of somebody who treated people with respect because, I mean, I was their equal for so long. Follow through, you know what I mean? Um, and so I think pretty quick, quickly I, I earned the staff's respect as somebody who would do the job, you know, and, and I was still, the students, you know, I, I held them accountable, but, you know, didn't have issues or concerns. It, it went fine. Uh, going from an assistant principal to a high school, four a, a four A high school principal is a pretty big jump, uh, considering I'd never been a principal. Um, in that first year, we were in construction, so I had like three campuses. I didn't even know what I'm doing. You know, um, it was uh, it was quite a transition, and I had a lot to learn. Uh, worked way too much. Um, got caught, Garn Christensen actually talked to my wife, and then I got chewed out for. Uh, not being home enough, um, but uh, yeah, the transition I think was easier because I knew the building, but yet harder because I knew everyone so well I didn't want to fail, you know? So the students or the staff, and the community knows you too. I've been doing this for a long time. I love it, but uh, it's time. And that's what's making news on this eighth day of April. We'll have a newscast, of course, for you tonight. We think it's important that you know what's going on around North Central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley. The news on TV at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock, 5, 6, and 10. In half-hour increments there, if you consume your news on your computer or whatever there may be, smart TV, we got you covered there. Our news will be up and running on our homepage, ncwlife.com, our YouTube page, our Facebook page. And if you haven't downloaded our app yet, that's how you go about doing it. Get the NCW Life Channel app, and if there's something out there that you think is newsworthy, send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. Still to come, sports out of the Mariners and the Kraken and the local high school teams and the Wild do over the weekend. I'll let you know in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Nothing is more important than the quality of your sleep. It sets up your whole day and gives you the energy you need for those important moments. And this week, Walker's Furniture is giving you a great opportunity to upgrade to a better mattress with special savings on all brands and up to five years special financing with no money down, as well as free delivery. Plus, up to $300 of free furniture with select mattress purchases, making it the perfect time to improve your sleep for less. This week at Walker's. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Nineteen minutes after the hour, William Contreras hit not one but two home runs. He's a really good catcher for Milwaukee, and the Brewers pounded the Mariners 12-4 on Sunday. Contreras finished with four hits, 
Five RBIs. The Mariners have now lost four of five. They are in Toronto to take on the Blue Jays this afternoon. First pitch 407 on Root Sports. Other teams, the American League West, how do they do? They only had one game between two division rivals, and the Astros beat Texas 3 to 1. Red Sox rolled over the Angels 12 to 2, and the A's won a game. They beat the Tigers and beat them good. 7-1. to one. As far as the Kraken is concerned, Shane Wright had his first two-goal game in the NHL. The Kraken defeats Anaheim 3-1 to one on Friday night. They've won four of their past six. Matty Benier has also scored for the Kraken, who sweeps the four-game season series from the Ducks. They have never done that before. Now they have. Seattle plays host to Arizona tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Well, I hope you watched the game. It was a good and South Carolina becomes the 10th team in NCAA history. Both men and women combined to go undefeated and win the national championship. They beat Iowa. The final was 87-75 to in Cleveland last night, so the Gamecocks finish 38-0. and And now it's the men's turn. Over the weekend, of course, number one Purdue beat North Carolina State 63-50, and number one seed UConn knocked off Alabama 86-72. So UConn and Purdue for the national championship 6-20 tonight on TBS. Well, after forcing a game six with a dramatic 5-4 victory in overtime on Friday night, the Wenatchee Wilds inaugural season in the Western Hockey League came to an end yesterday afternoon in a 4-2 loss to Kelowna. Stephen Arp was the hero Friday night, netting the game winner 54 seconds into overtime. Is Kowalik lost his footing, trying to clear this one out of the Rockets' end. Near corner for Briley Wood, wraparound chance, no, they tap it in and score! It's Kenta Isogai! It is 1-0 Wenatchee. Don't blink, you're going to miss something. Kenta Isogai taps in. The runaway wraparound and one for the Wild. Time of the goal, 44 seconds. Wood sends it ahead, looking for Isogai. Catches him on his back skate. Back for Wood, looking for a shot. Poked off his stick. Isogai, top corner. He scores! And some contact after the goal. Is busted loose. Shelter got knocked out. Sword getting in. Whiteman jumped Sword from behind. Esau guy is knocked down in front of the net. Cooper has it right wing at the red line. Rips it back against Johnson and works it for Briley Wood. Wild in the Dick seating air conditioning power play for the third time tonight. Freezing across back door. One timer. They score. Briley Wood. Would you believe it? It's 3 1 with Ashy on a Dick's heating and air conditioning, power play goal. It's a backdoor bang in for big game, Briley Wood. Cooper slides it back. Ward looking for an angle. Stutes staying right in front of him. Cooper, right point, looks for a joust in front, they score! Friesen with the last touch. Friesen with the finish. 4-2 Wenatchee. We just talked during the uh, this state Wenatchee Wild history about Parker Murray's overtime heroics. Thrown on, they score! Steven Arp, drive home safely. We'll see you for game six. Anyone got plans for Sunday? The series is... That was Friday night. Yesterday, yeah, it didn't happen. The Wild never led in a 4-2 loss to the Rockets. Maddox McCadehy and Evan Friesen provided the goal scoring for the Wild. And to the other way. Here comes Crystal back inside the zone on right wing to the middle. The trailer, Caden, Sandra Kang for Crystal. Let's go! Crystal, his second of the series on a tremendous feed from the guy they call Kanger. And the Rockets a 1 0 lead. T check chance, side, score! Too much, too much power, too much rocket, and it's T check Inla tying a franchise record. His eighth of this playoff series. He moves into a tie with 
Jordy Woodruff for most goals in a playoff series. OHL, right? I mean, just in a game of this magnitude. Here's Fraser, right wing enters the zone. Centering theater shot, they score! McCangerty! He rips it home, beats the goaltender, kick it in, and when actually on the board for the Kangerty, that's going to feel good, scoring that goal in his own hometown of Kelowna. Center Crystal, and he'll shell it back towards the Wenatchee blue line. One here by the Rockets, they score! It's Crystal the steal! Actually, a Ginla the steal, and Crystal the finish! Fluker fumbled the puck right in front of his own net, and the Rockets have taken a 3-1 lead. The relentless pressure of the forecheck. The drive, that's blocked. Rockets crystal to center. Next grab, cut, cut, chance. Score! 3.56 remaining. Max Graham empty net goal. And the Rockets have taken a 4-1 lead. Nice Ward. He'll send their side. That's Wood. Back for Sward. He'll fire. Deflected. It's the side they score. It's freezing. He gets it home. That makes it a two goal differential with 208 remaining here in the third period. They get another goal with the goaltender out. Still lots of time left. It's now 4 2. The game has ended. The series has concluded. How do you like those apples? The Kelowna Rockets are off to postseason play in round number two for the first time since 2006. Yep, Kelowna moves on. The Wenatchee Wild season is done. The Rockets will take on Prince George, by the way, in the Western Conference semifinals. And let's do some uh, prep sports. Over the weekend to the soccer scoreboard we go. Wenatchee all over Moses Lake and leave off the field of the Apple Bowl. The final there was 9 to 1. Eastmont beat West Valley easily 9 to 2 on the pitch. Cascade, they're very good. They beat Elma 5 to 1. Manson knocked off Cashmere 1 0 in Bridgeport. Got by OMAC on the pitch. Prep baseball scoreboard from Friday. Wenatchee sweeps two from Sunnyside. Barely winning the first one 5 to 4, then 10 rundum 14 to 4 in the second game. Moses Lake and Eastmont split. Moses Lake won the opener in Moses Lake 5 to 3. Eastmont came back to win the nightcap. 2-0. Othello sweeps Afreda. 3-0 and 1-0 and other prep baseball from over the weekend. Quincy swept Royal 8-2 and 5-1. Chelan sweeps Okanagan. Columbia out of Burbank. 10 runs cascade. 15-5. And those were just some of the games that people are playing on this eighth day of April. Happy National Zoo Lovers Day. If you're into zoos, and a lot of people are, Today is your day. Uh, zoos go back a long time. 2500 BC when the ruling classes in Egypt and other places would have all these exotic animals brought to them and they had their own private zoo. The first modern public zoo in Paris. It first opened in Paris in 1793. The Philadelphia Zoo was the oldest zoo in the United States. It was planned in the late 1850s but they didn't get it open until 1874. There was some sort of war uh, in the meantime. Fun facts about zoos, about 600 million people visit a zoo once a year around the world. There are more than 2,800 zoos and aquarium all over the world. The United States has 355 zoos, but we got nothing on Germany. Germany has 414 zoos. That's pretty impressive. About 80% of animals that live in captivity at zoos will live longer than if they were out in the wild. There are exceptions. The bigger animals who out in the wild have really no natural enemies. We're talking elephants and rhinoceroses and hippos and things like that. They actually live longer in the wild than they do in captivity. But for the most part, if I guess it makes up for being in jail, right? You get to live longer, I suppose. According to the experts, the five best zoos in the United States. This is the rankings, not the most attended or whatever. These are the five best zoos in the country. Number five, Zoo Miami. Number four, the San Diego Zoo. I've been there, it's impressive. Number three, the Bronx Zoo. Number two, Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium in Omaha, Nebraska. It has a great reputation. And number one, tops of the list, Disney's Animal Kingdom. There you go. Happy Zoo Lovers Day today. It's the bottom of the hour. Today in history, up until this date in 1913, senators, United States senators, were elected by their state legislators. 
The 17th Amendment went into effect on this date in, uh, 19, in, in 1913, and they took it away from the state legislators and gave it to the people. There was a lot of corruption going on. First of all, the state legislators could never agree on anything. Uh, they, you could send anybody they wanted to if it was, it was just kind of crazy. A lot of Senate seats were simply bought and sold. It was going very well. And so they say, you know what, we'll give it to the people instead. The direct election of your United States Senator became part of the Constitution 108 years ago today. 69 years ago today, in the middle of the Korean War, all of the steel workers were all going to go on strike against the eight major steel mills in this country. This strike was scheduled to begin April 9th, 1952, at midnight the day before. Harry Truman, the president of the United States, said, we're just going to take them. The president seizes all domestic steel production in this country to stop the steel strike. Needless to say, the United Steelworkers of America were pretty happy. The steel companies were not very happy. They sued to regain control of their facilities. It was fast-tracked all the way to the Supreme Court. And just a couple of months later, the Supreme Court said, sorry, Harry, you overstepped your bounds. You can't do that anymore. So they gave the steel plants back to the steel corporations. Why did they strike? The steel workers? To get more money. And it was all said and done when they settled the strike. After 53 days, the steel workers got more money. And we went back to making steel. That was on the state 69 years ago today. 55 years ago today, the four expansion teams in Major League Baseball all played their debut games, their very first games, and every one of them won. The San Diego Padres, the Montreal Expos, the Kansas City Royals, and the Seattle Pilots all played their very first games in franchise history all on the same date in 1969, and they all won. That's right, the Seattle Pilots were in first place. Next day, they weren't. That's pretty remarkable if you think about it. And this is the 50th anniversary of Henry Aaron. I remember this like it was yesterday, although I was just a kid. I was only nine when it happened. But I still remember watching Monday Night Baseball when Henry Aaron became baseball's all-time home run king, probably the most famous record in all of sports. Here's how Vin Scully called it. One ball and no strikes. Aaron waiting. The outfield deep and straight away. Fast ball is a high drive in the deep left center field. Buckner goes back to the fence. It is gone. in the Deep South for breaking a record of an all-time baseball idol. And it is a great moment for all of us, and particularly for Henry Aaron. What a great night indeed. Henry Aaron does it 50 years ago today. And uh, speaking of sports legends, we have three of them for birthdays today, two heavenly birthdays. John Havlicek, Hondo was born in the state in 1940, passed away a number of years ago at the age of 79. One of only three players who were perfect in the NBA Finals, 8-0. and oh. He played in eight NBA championship series and won all eight of them. That's pretty remarkable. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1984 and a 13-time NBA All-Star, John Havlicek, born in the state in 1940. Jim Catfish Hunter, Jim Hunter, who never played minor league baseball never played it, got out of serving in the Vietnam because he was accidentally shot in the foot by his brother when they were out duck hunting. So he got out of that. He still says he wishes he never got shot in the foot. Jim Catfish Hunter, eight times an All-Star, five times a World Series champion, baseball Hall of Fame, pitched a perfect game, the great Jim Hunter Catfish, born in the state in 1946, died of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis in 1999 at the age of 53. 
And Felix Hernandez is 38 years old. He is the Mariners' all-time leader in wins and strikeouts. Of course, back in August of 2012, he threw that incredible perfect game, which I remember watching on television. 38th for Felix. That's his Atlanta Braves hat. Remember, after he left the Mariners, he signed with the Braves, but never made it to the big leagues, uh, with Atlanta anyway. Happy birthday, King Felix. Thanks to our platinum sponsor. There they are right there, Alpine Air for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. Be sure to have your HVAC system checked before the heat comes this summer. And the filters, too. Don't forget about cleaning your filters. Alpine Air will walk you through that. Special thanks to our friends at Pool to Spa Services on Worthen, down by the Pibus Public Market. They've been around a long time because they know what they're doing. And speaking of being around a long time and knowing what you're doing, our friends at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Going to take a break. It's hard to believe since Mike McNaughty has spent a long time as a law enforcement officer that he was once a rebel. He's going to tell you all about it. And then Austin Drade live right here in the studio to wrap up the Wenatchee Wilds campaign, which came to an end yesterday afternoon. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley Monday edition on the NCW Life Channel. AmeriCorps allows me to make a huge impact on my community and kickstart my career. AmeriCorps gave me the opportunity to use my skills for the greater good. Serving in AmeriCorps gave me the opportunity to help in my community. Take a few minutes to see how you can help your community. AmeriCorps does vital work in our region. You can make a difference. Join today and make the impact. I moved here six years ago. The manager here asked me what I like to do, and I told him that I like to play games, I like to play cards. And he said, boy, have I got a woman for you to meet. <laughs> and he introduced me to her, and we walked down the hall, and I took her hand, and we've never let go of each other. Life is so good when you're happy, and I'm very happy at Prestige. Thanks. Oh, it's only five dollars. Oh, I like paying double. <laughs> Why? I've always paid more. You wouldn't pay double for coffee. So don't pay double on your heating bill. Cut your heating bills by up to half when you switch to a heat pump or ductless mini split and get cash back from Chelan PUD plus federal tax credits. Learn more at chelanpud.org slash save. Now's the time to get a great deal on select Kubota equipment. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience in the U.S., they offer the versatility and reliability to get the job done right all year round. Right now, bring home select VX and L-Series tractors for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 72 months. Contact your Kubota dealer for details. Dog Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I often think about the social upheaval in the 60s and I consider those days against what we're going through now. At least now, we're not having the assassinations we had back then. Then and now, there's a lot of similarities. Racial injustice, police reform, political division, but one thing I've noticed, in the 60s, it seems as like, like it was us against the establishment. Now it seems like we're more against each other. Give that some thought. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Hey there, folks. Blueberry Carry here to invite you on out to Blueberry Hills to experience some real, real treats. Take a look at our homemade cream pies, our amazing cheesecakes, and don't forget our famous banana pudding. Remember, we're more than just great treats. People come from all over the world to experience what has been called one of the best destination restaurants in the Pacific Northwest. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson. It's where the world is coming to. Hey, hon, would you run this around to the wash rack? Oh, okay.
Hey, hon, what happened? They shrunk the truck. The all-new midsize Canyon is now available at Sangster Motors. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents Wonders of Wooden Avenue. Steelhead Cider offers 20 taps with cider, beer, and wine, featuring views of the lake, great music, and fantastic flights. Find it on Wooden Ave behind the bookstore in downtown Chelan. Kelly's Classic Ace Hardware Store. From the minute you walk through the door, you'll feel the difference. Kelly's revives the days of personal service lost in the big box stores of today. Kelly's Ace Hardware in Classic Downtown Chelan. Wonders of Wooden Avenue, North Central Washington's premier shopping district. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur. Well, we were hoping it would be happier circumstances. Uh, last time Austin and I visited live last week, it was win or lose. I'll see you Monday the 8th. And he said, okay, well, it's Monday the 8th, and there will be no Game 7, unfortunately. Kelowna, of course, wins the series four games to two, but not without some dramatics. By the way, Austin Drade, who's making his very first appearance here, on the NCW Life channel. Uh, we're going to roll highlights from Friday and yesterday. So uh, Austin, I'm going to ask you to narrate uh, using the, the monitor right here in the studio. You folks at home, please use your televisions. Here's Friday night and the goals. Well, we'll start uh, pretty quickly. The earliest goal in the series came at 44 seconds and a runaway wraparound chance finds Kenta Isogai at the back side of the net. Kenta taps it in to make it a one to nothing game. Riley Wood with the assist. He came in with uh, eight points on the series, and not a surprise, he picks up another one. Wanted to put it in the net himself, but okay, I'll feed you instead. One to nothing score, Wild with the lead. This one would cause a little controversy. Drop pass for Kenta Iso guy, throws it on, he scores, but wait, there's more. Luke Shelter comes mm. by and catches him knee to knee, and you know that that's going to draw a crowd. Kenta Isogai injured on that play. He would not return. His season would end up being done. Luke Shelter's series would end up being done, suspended for game six and ejected from game five. Two one score. Wild trying to make it a two goal game. They bring it inside the zone. Evan Friesen sends it across. Back over to Briley Wood. Big game, Briley Wood with a backdoor bang in. 222 left in the second period. A two goal lead. Deuces wild if you're playing scoreboard poker with us at home. Briley Wood waiting at the bottom of the faceoff circle for the tap in. His third point of the game. He had assists on the first two goals for Kenta Isogai. Third period, back to a one goal game. What's happening here? Nothing much. Joust. Evan Friesen sending one to the back of the net off a pass from Miles Cooper, and that one makes it a two-goal game. Thrown and then, on. then they pulled their goalie. Then they pulled the goalie plus a double minor double for minor, the Wild. Yep. And just like game one for the Wild, the Kelowna Rockets score on both ends of the double minor, sending us to overtime. Stephen Arp, your hero of the night. Excuse me, pardon me. There we go. Goodbye. 5-4 win for the Wenatchee Wild, 54 seconds into overtime. And Stephen Arp says, yep, I had that one all the way. <laughs> Wild still alive after game five, on to game six after Sunday. After Kenta was injured, and it, it, was a, it was a cheap, dirty play in the fifth. How long did the, how long did the uh, 
festivities continue afterwards? Uh, the festivities only happen for uh, the next couple of minutes. I think it took more time to uh, sort everything out than uh, it did to actually uh, separate everything. But uh, the crowd's certainly not happy. Our guys uh, certainly not happy. Uh, it was. Uh, I'll hold my tongue because. Well, it, you can uh, say it. it. It doesn't look good when the uh, <laughs> when the radio guy gets a team fine, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. So Isagai, uh, one of our three or four best players, and of course his career is coming to an end as well. He's he's going to be out of the uh, Western Hockey League now that the season is over. Uh, that was a big blow for the team to lose him. That was uh, that was a huge blow. He brings a lot to this team. Every time you see uh, that uh, that top line come onto the ice, which is an awful lot, uh, that puck is on his stick at some point. So uh, he's been a playmaker for us, a ton of speed, and uh, certainly uh, certainly was missed in Game Six. The nice thing is, we actually do still have one more year with him. He's uh, one of our 19-year-olds okay. battling for a spot next year, so uh, we have a chance to have him back at least one more season to uh, make an impact here in the WHL before uh, he moves on to uh, whatever uh, whatever pro career we know he's going to have. But uh, what will the summer hold for him? Not sure. Hopefully a lot of good things. Well, that was Friday uh, evening, and then it was off. We forced a game six. And then on uh, Sunday, yesterday afternoon, up in Kelowna, we never, never led that game, although we certainly had our chances. In many respects, we kind of outplayed. Uh, Kelowna, but again, uh, they won the game 4-2, to two. they won the series 4-2. to two. Here's uh, Sunday's highlights, Austin, same deal, I'm going to have you use the monitor here. Andrew Crystal, back to the left point, looking for Crystal, one-timer, boom, up top. Top shelf tally for Andrew Crystal, the feed back from the far point, and Crystal hits his target just under the bar. This one about nine minutes into the game to make this one a one to nothing contest. Good news is, though, it was only a one nothing game going to the second period. Wild is still very much in it, but a backdoor tap in for TJ Ginla, who was hot all series long. Eight goals on the series for TJ Ginla, and that makes it a two to nothing game in the second period. The Wild would get their opportunity, though. Let's take one more look at it. Michael Chichek, TJ Ginla. Arrows to the scoreboard. Arrows all the way. 2 0 Wild, but a 2 on 1. Can they make it 2 to 1? The hometown kid, welcome back, Maddox McCaggerty, under the bar to make it a 2 1 He's game. He's from uh, Kelowna? He is from oh. Kelowna. Actually, scored his first point for the Wild against Kelowna <laughs> back on January 6th when they played the uh, Rockets down here. 2 1 score, Wild very much in it, but a turnover oh. that is not the spot for it. And a feed right out in front. Iginla with the takeaway and Crystal with the tap to the top. 3-1. Kelowna Rockets with the lead. Maybe and that was an indication this just wasn't going to be our game right there. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to give up. Wild, nothing to lose in the final minutes. They pull the goaltender, but you can't give it back. And it's in the back of the net with a toss from just inside the blue line. Max Graham. Maxing out scoring for the Kaluna Rockets. Make it 4-1 with four minutes left. Wild would give it their best efforts, and they would be rewarded once. Evan Friesen pick up a goal to make it 4-2. Shot from Graham Swart is blocked wide. Evan Friesen right there to pitch it in and makes it a 4-2 game. But the Wild would get no closer than Evan Friesen shot from right at the edge of the crease, throw that home, young man. Well, congratulations to Kelowna. You know, they, they outplayed us in many respects, and we'll, we'll give them that. Is the, was the Wenatchee Kelowna series the only series in the first round of the quarterfinals uh, where the higher seeded team lost? Did all uh, the higher seeded teams win? In the Western Conference Finals, okay. yes. Both of the 4 5 series went to the number five teams. So uh, both conferences will be one, two, three, and five into the semifinals. And that was the only, uh, of, of all the series, Eastern or Western Conference, that actually went to six games. A lot of them were sweep, sweeps or just five-game series. I think half of them were uh, were, sweep, were sweeps. The other three were uh, five-game series. Uh, Everett's series against Vancouver actually closed out while we were on the bus home from Kelowna. But they had a little bit of a different stagger in that series where they were going to play Tuesday, Wednesday for game six and seven. So uh, ours, was, uh, ours was not the last one to wrap up. But it was the longest one to wrap up. And you got to remember that uh, Everett, uh, the Angel of the Winds Casino, gets a lot of business, and so they have to 
sometimes schedule hockey around other events. Kind of like, kind of like the NHL out in the town Toyota center. It happens all the time. So who's who's uh, who are we not going to see anymore? Who's who's going to be moving on to bigger and better uh, professional hockey pastures? Uh, players that we've grown to uh, like this year. So the three players who are aging out this year are uh, Graham Sward, who had a story WHL career, 250 games. Uh, if you include his playoff numbers, he ended up with 199 career points. He was one shy of the 200 mark for uh, for his entire WHL career across the regular season, postseason, everything. But uh, he's uh, he's got a an entry level contract with Colorado Avalanche. I'm sure waiting for him. He had the, he was involved in one of those deadline deal. Uh, uh, deals with the Nashville Predators, so his rights have gone to the Colorado Avalanche, but uh, I know they probably got a contract waiting for him to sign uh, the moment he's ready. Uh, Briley Wood, I'm sure he'll get some pro looks the way he played this season. Uh, he uh, scored all of four points last year in the playoffs, and this year he was the number one scorer in this round with a dozen points over those six games, so he will definitely be missed. He was uh, he was a, 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 an opportunistic player and a difference maker for us on that top line. And then you have Carter Prasovsky, who is uh, not, the, uh, not the biggest defenseman for us, but uh, probably our feistiest defenseman and uh, uh, went to bat a lot for his teammates. Uh, his last official appearance for the Wild ended up being that uh, hat trick up in Victoria back in uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm sure he'll be getting some looks to go to the pros as soon as uh, he gets an opportunity to uh, pack up and, and uh, make his way up too. And for the players who we hope to see next year or will see next year that are going to be sticking around with the Wild for another season, what, what's, what, what happens for those folks? Uh, it's now season's over. How does, it, how does this work? They'll eventually, of course, be heading home, flying to wherever it is that they, they live and keep their hockey legs in shape. What, uh, walk me through the next three or four days in the Wild Front Office. So I know there are going to be some uh, final fitness tests that the guys will uh, go through and some uh, some meetings that they'll go through with coaches, and uh, I'm sure our GM, Bliss Littler, will be part of that. So uh, it's uh, it's not like the guys are uh, packing up and fleeing town as soon as they can, but uh, the uh, the practice time is, uh, is over for the guys. It's not like they'll be preparing for uh, games that unfortunately aren't on the schedule coming up. Well, it is what it is. So um, you're, I think for the first uh, year in the Western Hockey League, we won, what, 36 games? 36 games I this would, year? I would say it was pretty damn successful. Certainly the Wild fans are all in on this. I think it took them about three games before they realized this is cool. This ain't the British Columbia Hockey League. Your impressions? I, I think the, the fans really jumped on board with it this year. Obviously, we had a lot of initial excitement, folks uh, jumping in and getting season tickets. and. I think uh, we put a good product on the ice for them here this year. I think uh, seeing the level of competition that came into town each game uh, really helped uh, really helped sell our fans on uh, the product they were getting as well. And uh, I, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what year two will bring for these guys. Certainly a learning experience for uh, for uh, a lot of our fans who uh, aren't uh, are still getting used to how things in the Western Hockey League work. We've got a couple drafts coming up that uh, the Wild weren't involved in yet uh, last year. Uh, so there's still a little bit to, uh, to sort out before we hit that one-year anniversary coming up in mid-June. But uh, there's uh, a lot to look forward to for the fans in, uh, in year two. And it's, uh, I think the learning experience has been a positive one in the front office as well once we've uh, gotten a chance to kind of navigate the new waters here. And it should be pointed out, let's, let's eliminate a, a certain myth and misconception about the front office now that the season's over. These guys work just as hard, sometimes even harder. I know Bliss, for instance, is going to be spending a lot of time in a lot of airports and hotel rooms and rental cars as he goes out and scouts. It's not like you guys are heading off to your hammocks and your cocktails by the beach now. No, this is uh, this is a 12-month gig for us. Uh, if we're not prepping for games on the upcoming schedule, we're prepping for uh, games on the upcoming schedule for next season. We'll be working on uh, promotions and uh, keeping uh, keeping our content populated uh, as far as social media website goes uh, over the next few months. So uh, if you're, uh, uh, we're going to be preparing all the way through to, uh, to get this thing 
off the ground and ready to go when uh, when late August and early September roll around. Any certain dates we want to circle on our calendar, like when's the draft and when do we start doing all of that stuff? I believe the, the two drafts are May 8th and 9th, so we'll have two drafts uh, here this year. One is our U.S. priority draft, which is only for U.S. kids, uh, basically from the Mississippi River, Minnesota, the Gulf Coast, uh, West. So uh, all of those states are opened up as far as the Western Hockey League territory goes. Uh, the, uh, the four or six states that we were limited to in the BCHL, those have gone away. So uh, everything else is uh, wide open uh, in the U.S. and the four provinces in Western Canada. Uh, but that'll be coming up, I believe it's May 8th, so we'll get a couple picks in there. And our uh, scouting staff, our uh, coaching staff list, they're all working on uh, determining who are the best U.S. kids that we anticipate will come. We don't want to lose those uh, those picks and uh, use them on uh, on a kid that we're going to have to recruit and try to uh, try to get out here and uh, and hope for the best. We want these kids to come here and uh, and make an impact for us. So we're going to choose the uh, couple best kids that uh, will have a good chance to do that for us. And then the WHL prospects draft will be uh, the next day. So all of the best bantam age talent uh, in the Western U.S. Uh, Western Canada will be uh, up for the picking. I believe we're picking 12th, so right at the middle of the pack uh, in each round this year, uh, which is uh, which I think will be a good spot for us. Uh, we got about a minute left real quickly, who do you, because I'm not going to see you for a while, who do you like for the Western Hockey League Championship and who do you like for the Stanley Cup champions? Stanley Cup, a lot of different ways that one could go, uh, but the the WHL. Now remember the, the, the NHL can't find you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the WHL, I'll tell you what, uh, there are some hot teams out in the Eastern Conference right now. Uh, Moose Jaw and Swift Kern are actually playing each other. Connor Geeky and Matt Savoy will play each other to go to the conference finals, and uh, Saskatoon is the likely team waiting for them on the other side. Moose Jaw has just impressed me, the way that they've uh, come together the, uh, the second half of the year. So um, if I had to pick... I'd say Moose Jaw, maybe against Portland in okay. the uh, in the WHL final. Uh, the uh, the NHL, so many different ways it could go, but ah, uh, what the heck, Vegas. Cool. I'll put my bet on Vegas to go. Why back not? To I like San Jose. I think the Sharks are going to take it all. <laughs> I really. What do. about Chicago? Oh yeah, there you go. Connor <laughs> Bedard. Haven't they haven't they dropped out of the league yet? I can't remember <laughs> exactly. Austin Drade, give him a big hand. I guess I'll see you off, and I'll see you at the ballpark. Or something oh yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. I could be a total stranger. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll do your weather forecast. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the Mississippi Life Channel. The Lake Chelan Chamber of Commerce presents The Magic of Manson. Spring is here at the Chelan Ridge Winery. Check out the all-new deck area. Enjoy an amazing view, new vintage wines, and that down-home hospitality Chelan Ridge is famous for. Wine Girl Wines is already famous for wine, beer, and great entertainment. And now they have added craft cocktails to the list of food and drink. So pop on by our Manson location for some good old-fashioned fun. Sit pretty with spring savings now at Boswell's. Get $200 off all stressless recliners and ottomans, classic power base recliners, home office chairs, and each seat of a stressless sofa, love seat, or sectional. Plus, get 10% off the new Stressless Sky mattress and $50 off each Stressless Laurel or Mint dining chair. Shop Boswell's, 2915 Easy Street in Wenatchee. From the National Weather Service, two things you want to talk about. First of all, going to be windy, just like in Iowa. It's going to be very, very windy tomorrow. It'll pick up in intensity tonight. It'll really get cooking tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon will be quite windy. It'll die down Tuesday afternoon and will calm down just a little bit. So you folks out there, sustained winds, 10 to 25 miles an hour, but gusts in the valley anyway at 40. 
and other locations that are susceptible to wind, you're going to have stronger winds tomorrow. From the National Weather Service, there you go. A uh, slight chance of some light rain. The sun and the clouds will do a little tug of war. We'll get up to about 58. Windy on Tuesday at the high of 60. Lots of sunshine and warmer on Wednesday with a high near 61. Warmer still on Thursday and Friday. For the weekend, we just don't know yet. Real quickly, the timeline again for the partial eclipse today. It'll start at 1038 here in the Wenatchee Valley in our viewing area. It'll be at its maximum about 20%. Of the sun will be covered by the moon at 11:31, and it will be over by 12:25. Enjoy your eclipse. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Live It Up, the show where we explore and discuss how to take your life to that next level and beyond. We cover health, wealth, relationships, and how to create a life that feels good, because after all, that's what we want. We want to feel good. I'm your host and coach, Fletcher Ellingson, and today on the show, we're gonna be visiting with Luke Wall of Only Seven Seconds. Maybe you've heard about or seen um, only seven seconds. Um, I started seeing their signs several years ago and I was like, what is that? Um, so I did some investigation and uh, I was curious about what they were up to. I learned a little